daily run through Pensacola illuminates a love affair between a boxer and a city with only one star. In March, the local hero treated his town to some big city glitz and glamour. He pounds the pavement daily as the local hero stays rooted in his town while spreading its name far and wide. The local hero could bank more money for himself by fighting at Vegas casinos, but from time to time, he fights for less at home. Pensacola's local hero wins a fight, the newspaper spends its own money to congratulate him. This crowd rises to its feet and looks for the first round knockout. Every resident of Pensacola recognizes his footsteps. The local hero rewards them with performances worthy of a time capsule. Gentlemen, we may be seeing one of the most talented fighters that's ever come along in this game. There are no other professional sports franchises in Pensacola. Just the local hero and world super middleweight champion, Roy Jones. Center in Pensacola, Florida, and a rabid hometown crowd pulls for another virtuoso performance for Roy Jones Jr. His opponent tonight, the punching postman Tony Thornton. Will Jones deliver? You'll find out in the next 12 rounds. A packed house in the Civic Center here, waiting for their hometown hero to arrive in the ring and celebrating the occasion as for the second time in just a little over six months. Roy Jones Jr. rewards his devoted hometown following by fighting here instead of in one of the casino capitals of the sport. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you back to this, the latest pit stop for Roy Jones along his possible long road toward boxing immortality. Tonight, Jones, generally considered along with welterweight champ Pernell Whitaker, one of the two best all-around fighters in the sport, is a 30-to-1 betting favorite over the man ranked by one of the governing bodies as a number one contender, Tony Thornton. Working with us as always, HBO boxing expert and world heavyweight champ, George Foreman. And George, uh, as we've established, Roy Jones's talent is so overwhelming that he's already being compared to some of the greatest names in the history of the sport, Muhammad Ali, the two Sugar Rays, various others. Whom do you think of most when you watch him work? Well, the first thing you're gonna observe about Jones the eyes. He never misses anything. It reminds me of Muhammad Ali and what he had best going for him. He, ne he saw everything you was going to do and he could stop it or get out of the way. Jones got that greatness about him, but it's all in the eyes. So dominant in his performances, seen as being virtually without opposition, Jones amuses himself by giving up hundreds of thousands of dollars every time he chooses to fight here for his hometown crowd in Pensacola rather than in a Vegas or Atlantic City casino. Larry Merchant, HBO boxing analyst, what do you make of this ongoing love affair between Jones and, and his hometown of Pensacola? Well, I guess the two words that come to mind are roots, as in Roy Jones' roots, and good old-fashioned civic boosterism. <laughs> and there were two other words, Emmett and Smith, the great running back of the Dallas Cowboys, also from Pensacola, but he can't play here, 
and Roy Jones can and does and loves to. What also intrigues me about Roy Jones' world in Pensacola are some of the little particulars of it. For example, he hangs out with some old buddies named Shoe and Maine and Four Barrel. For example, another example, his attorney lives in a 25,000 square foot seaside palace with a yacht parked outside and inside valuable Fabergé eggs, paintings by old masters and antique cars are parked there. And for this example, there was a big hurricane here, as you may recall, early in August. It lashed this coast and cost Roy Jones 30 of his 200 fighting cocks. They escaped from their cages and they did what Roy Jones has bred them to do. They killed each other. And this, I guess, is the nerve center of Roy Jones' world in Pensacola. Yeah, indeed. The kamikaze <laughs> roosters were irretrievable, but the physical structure here at the Civic Center was not. When the building was damaged by Hurricane Aaron, Jones made it clear to authorities here that he wasn't going to fight anywhere else. So they would simply have to get on their motor and get the necessary repairs done in time to preserve this date. They got it done. Jones has been sitting in the arena tonight watching his buddies Derek Smoke Gaynor and Billy the Kid Lewis fight. He loves to give back to Pensacola. Pensacola claims to be the oldest city in America. More than 400 years rich in history. Cradle of naval aviation. Famous for miles of pristine beaches. And celebrated home of one of boxing's best. The Gulf Coast region has always been without a Major League Sports franchise unless you consider the star power of the world super middleweight champ. I don't think there's ever been uh, a magnet uh, like Roy Jones in any sport here in Pensacola. If people want to see a professional athlete, they could drive five hours to Atlanta or three hours to New Orleans, or they could drive five minutes to the Pensacola Civic Center and, and see Roy or, or turn on TV. He is Pensacola's professional sports franchise. Like all towns, Pensacola loves winners, as was exhibited when Jones came home after last year's complete destruction of former champ James Tony. It blew the minds of a lot of people that we were given a full-page ad, which was nothing but a picture of Roy Jones and a message from Roy. That was given to us. I have a budget where we set aside space to do special promotions. I took an option to use some of the space that I'm allocated to run that full page. And our readers loved it. People just love to see him and they feel uh, closer to him because he is physically there for him. He's not hidden behind walls. He's not just someone they see on TV, but he's out there in the community. There's no joke about me, no schemes. I'm more. Everything you see in Roy is what I am. And that's just simple as that. Nothing hidden, nothing open, nothing closed. I'm just me. Like Baltimore superstar Cal Ripken, Jones understands his responsibilities and is committed to being the best he can be. <laughs> he tries to, I guess, live right, live straight, avoid trouble, and not everybody in boxing can say that. He's kind of gone his own way. If each, any of you have something you want to do in life, you can use me for an example. I want them to be able to look to war and say, well, he is a positive role model. He knows how to do things. He never thinks uh, weakly about nothing. He never makes weak decisions. He does everything like he's the best at it. Giving back is a habit. One of the ways the champ says thanks is by refusing to fight at lucrative meccas like Las Vegas. He could have fought other places, made more money other places, but uh, he wants his fans, the people he loves and the town he loves, to see him perform. It makes you get up higher because you realize that this is for the home, you know, you in your backyard. You know, you can beat a dog, but once you get him in his yard, he's going to fight you back, you know what I'm saying? So, it's always something about the yard of yours. Innate sincerity breeds a faithful following. This spring, a huge outpouring at his homecoming title defense. I looked around that arena, and to see 9,500 people waving these rumble rags, screaming at the top of their lungs, It was so beautiful to see Pensacola finally just coming out and saying, Roy Jones, we love you. He chose to do the fight here, and it allowed his fans to really see um, how the world outside of us viewed him. And that's where I think they got their first real glimpse 
of what a franchise he is becoming. I want people to get a chance to really see me perform while I can. Uh, one day, I may be gone, who, know, who knows? You know, there may not ever be another person uh, that can get the situation like I was able to do it. In terms of the national attention that Roy brings to our community, uh, Certainly our relationship to him and, and uh, the value that we place on Roy is very equivalent to what I'm sure Dallas feels for the Cowboys. The Cowboys taking Texas Stadium. Ripken trotting to shortstop. Tonight, it's Roy Jones and 10,000 Pensacolans in a showdown with Tony Thorne. Journalistic objectivity goes out the window yesterday. The local newspaper coming up with another one of those full page, full color trucks to cover a printed pep rally for Roy Jones. And the enthusiasm suggested there has certainly carried over into the arena tonight. Tale of the tape tonight in Pensacola. Roy Jones is nine years younger than Tony Thornton. They weighed in today. So their ring weights tonight will be pretty close to these 167 and a half for Jones, only 165 and three quarters for the punching postman from New Jersey. Punch that numbers, Larry. These uh, statistics were drawn up in both of their fights against Tony. And so you can see that Thornton was the much the more active fighter, but not as accurate. You will also see in these jab totals that Thornton threw many more jabs, Jones throws a lot of bigger punches. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Harold? The Roy Jones Tony Thornton fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. The first three rules on your screen are absolutely self explanatory, same as we usually go, but the fourth rule is a little bit different. You cannot coach from the corner. The state of Florida will vigorously enforce this rule that's been in the books for a long, long time. It's been in effect in many, many jurisdictions, Jim. And uh, Don Hazelton from the Florida State Athletic Commission says that he will throw you out of the corner if you coach too much. Jim. All right, Harold. When last you saw Tony Thornton here on HBO, it was October 29, 1993. And as Larry Merchant mentioned to you, a 12-round decision loss to James Tony in Tulsa for 168-pound championship at that time. This is his third world title shot. He had a chance against Chris Eubank in Glasgow, Scotland back in 1992. Thought he hurt Eubank in the fight, but couldn't finish him off and lost the decision. Actually, Jim, the first time we saw Thornton here on HBO was some 15 years ago when he was fighting for a college championship out of Westchester Teachers College outside of Philadelphia. He went on to become a real good professional. He has never been knocked out, learned his craft, trained in Philadelphia, lives in Glassboro across the Delaware River, where he is the punching postman, as well as the mauling mailman and the special delivery Thornton and anything else you want. And as you might suspect, he's a ray of sunshine. A heck of a guy. You cannot help but like Tony Thornton, who looks you right in the eye and gives you honest answers. 37 wins, six losses, one draw, 26 KOs. No easy case in there. As Larry points out, he's never been knocked out. Now there's a delay as Roy Jones prepares to come out of his dressing room. And the crowd gets ready. as recently as a half hour ago Jones was still sitting at ringside watching his buddy Billy Kid Lewis fight so he had to rush the gloves on and get ready to come out this is a dangerous thing fighting in front of your hometown all of the rags waving sometimes you can forget where you are and what you're about to do very dangerous but it has all the aspects of a rock and a sock show the course in front of the south, I'm bringing it to all them bad brothers with the mouth. I'll be rocking. 
dropping them, putting them in the check. I turned Tony Glass out, I went for the devil's neck. While I'm spicing them, dicing them, short of being nice to them. Chipping at the lip, I peeps and slipping, then I'm icing them. I'm still the quickest, stay up on my fitness. Always in control of LB, so this ain't it. This what they're singing and the screen, the record's playing what I'm saying. I ain't too much to death, but in the battle, I'll be slaying. The last one was kicked, I left the door out of the deck. Portrait of the artist as a young man. Looking for his 30th win in a row tonight. Twenty-five knockouts in his twenty-five wins. Twenty-nine wins, uh, Jeff. Check it, twenty-nine wins, yeah, that's what I mean. Thank you, Larry. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Civic Center here in Pensacola, Florida, where tonight Square Ring Incorporated, along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present 12 rounds of boxing for the super middleweight championship of the world. This bout is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation President Robert W. Lee and the Florida State Boxing Commission. Chairman, Dr. Jack Gugino. Vice Chairman, Alvin Goodman, who will also supervise at ringside for the IBF. Commissioners, Terry James, Eric Riley, and Alito Waldman. Executive Director, Don Hazelton. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Dave McCullough, Gary Merritt, and Bill Ray. And when the bell rings, the third man in the ring in charge of the action, Brian Gary. Now at this time, let's meet the fighters. Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing red trimmed with gold and weighing 165 and three quarter pounds. He comes into this ring tonight as a veteran of 44 professional bouts and has compiled a record of 37 victories against six defeats with one draw. 26 of those victories were over early by knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, from Glassboro, New Jersey, introducing the challenger and number one ranked super middleweight contender in the world, the punching postman, Tony Thornton. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing aqua and weighing in at 167 and one half pounds in 1988. He was voted the Olympic Games Most Outstanding Boxer. He captured a silver medal. And since turning professional, he has two world title belts and a perfect record of 29-0. His punching power has earned him 25 knockouts, 15 KOs in three rounds or less, six KOs in the very first round, and he is considered by many to be, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the undefeated super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. All right, Rody, go it. All right, gentlemen, I'll be the third man in the ring with you this evening in charge of this IBF world title bout at all times. Avoid the use of your head as a weapon. No rabbit punches, kidney blows, or low blows. If you score a knockdown, go to the neutral corner and don't come out till I signal. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out boxing at the bell. And now, boxing fans, are you ready? Pensacola, Florida, are you ready? There's only one thing left to do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready. You said, Jim, that Thornton was a very honest, straightforward man, and he is. And when we asked him, well, how do you beat a Roy Jones, he said, you tell me. Well, now he's got to tell us. <laughs> he said very candidly in a pre-fight press briefing, it would be bogus to say I can outbox the guy. How do you outbox him?
You were questioning yesterday, George Foreman, whether Tony Thornton would make the kind of commitment, take the kind of chance necessary to have a chance against a guy like Jones. Well, when you're going to fight a Roy Jones, that kind of boxer, that kind of fighter, you got to risk it all. You can't even care about getting scratched, cut. You got to be determined. To, it may kill me, but I'm going to win this thing. Get it up. Keep it up. Has he made that kind of commitment? We'll see. And in, in the interview, hit, it honey. didn't seem like he hit, made that honey. kind of commitment at all. Your hands are free. Roy Jones is in a strange situation Work here. He's expected to win, but you just can't do it dynamically against this kind of fight. This kind of fighter. You got to take your time. He's going to be around. fought against Antoine Bird here in March. He suspected he might have a shot at a first no round knockout, on. and he delivered he it. Hit. We asked no him hold. if he would try for the same thing here tonight. He said, no chance. This isn't the kind of guy you would do that against. This is probably the most solid fighter Roy Jones has been in again. He's not the best, but he's solid. Since James Tony or including James Tony? Including James Tony. Jo James Tony is a great fighter, a good fighter, but he goes outside sometimes the laws of boxing. This guy stays within the realms of good self-defense. If you're going to get him, it's because you're going to have to go to the body a lot, then come up to the head. You're not going to get him with one shot. Watch your show, Ryan. Jones Watch your head, backing Ryan. into the ropes Don't twice here in the first head. round and giving Thornton a chance head, to dictate the action at close range. Jones has had a couple of those fluid combination <laughs> throwing moments, but by and large, he's been sizing up Thornton, and Thornton has taken advantage of the opportunity to show off his solid technique. Hard left hook by Jones. Thornton protecting himself as Roy tries to come with another left hook. Thornton is very solid. You finish doing what you're going to do, then he gets right back on you with his constant solid. I hit you hit now and then on the body, in the chest, on the arms. Thornton works very hard all year round as a solid, well-conditioned fighter. Jones with those unorthodox leaping, ducking, and diving moves. Landing rights and lefts as the first round winds down. What? Jones what? turns around into a southpaw stance. I counted six big punches that Jones threw and missed on Thornton in the last 15 or 20 seconds. But Thornton didn't have any response. What he's trying to do is crowd him, keep him busy. And Jones stayed in the southpaw stance for the last 20 seconds of round one. Bring your overhead punches down a little bit. Don't hit them on top of the head. In between that shoulder and his chin. All right. That's good. Way to work. Way to work. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. Good. Okay, here you go. The lip. I'm cool. you want to hit it, right? Don't go over top too much. Okay. Make him throw it. See what I meant about those wide hooks that he throws? Bang, 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 bang. One right behind the other, but they're wide. Two out of every three is a slap. One may be hard. Go ahead and pull. You're good to go. His left eye got a little pocket in it. Roy Jones is the hardest kind of fighter to fight because he's hard to hit and he hits hard. begins Jones comes out in his conventional stance back to the usual routine and throwing the jab something he didn't do against Tony in his most noteworthy performance where most boxers practice and go out and do what they practice sometimes their hands just automatically go Roy Jones will not do anything unless he see it that makes him hard to hit because after he throws that punch. He's looking at your shoulder to make sure he's not going to get hit back. And he has enormous confidence in his own intelligence. Roy is pretty convinced that he sees everything well in the ring and can think of what to do next. He doesn't look for answers. He thinks he has it. Let me step back. Step back. Got gotcha. you. Action slowing a little bit in round two as Thornton is reluctant to throw punches here. Roy Jones is smart. He's starting to land some body punches, too. 
normally you don't see that in a good boxer where he goes down to the body just in case I'm around here 12 rounds I'm going to take some of this energy away from this guy this is more than a minute of conventional boxing for Jones working behind the jab and Thornton might not have thought he'd see it now Roy getting fancy as he polo punches with the right hand Thornton not quick enough to stop Jones's combinations and now Thornton moves forward and momentarily stops Jones from punching by throwing his own. Jones may get hurt, but he never loses focus. He stays focused, stays in the old orthodox stance. Why? Because you can only clown so much. Oh. Low blow by Jones. Oh, Referee keep Brian Gary right. steps Let's in and says, get him up. All right, that's it. Keep it up. Tony Thornton, according to punch stat numbers, has thrown four punches in the round. Now there are a couple of pawing lefts from Thornton. In his last fight against Vinny Pazienza, Roy Jones pitched a shutout in the fourth round, when for the first time in punch stat number history, Pazienza didn't land a punch in an entire round. It had never happened before. Thornton was able to land one jab. Now, to the uh, outside observer, that means nothing. But, hey, he had not been able to land one jab all night. Now he's got one in. Next time you get two in, and you're getting closer and closer to reaching Roy Jones. you got to climb a mountain one hand at a time. That's it. One punch at a time. It was before the bell. It was before the bell. Six. Seven. Thornton gets up easily. All right, Tony. To beat the Round's eighth over. count. And now Round that's the end Round's of over. round number three. Round's over. It cannot Round. be saved Round's by over. the bell. Round. The he round was saved ended. because he got up at the count of eight. Yeah, the round ended. You're all right. The round ended. They gave him a count after the bell. The round ended. You're all right? Put it down. Put it down. A leaping he left hand. Pulling out with the hole. Put Thornton down. And let, me, let us remind you, he has never been knocked out. I hope you're pulling back from it. You know better than that. Okay. Here it is. Reflexes and power like this are rare to see. It's like seeing a combination ballet dancer and bouncer. What a punch. He puts no body into his punches either. All fist like hands of stone. But his shoulder gets into it. it is, there's something. No, unique. it's all fist. He's got a hard four. He's got a good forearm there. Something. There's nothing in that but Number three. fist power. Let's do it. Well, let's face it. He's unbelievably strong for 168 pounds. There's growing discussion about whether he can someday fight heavyweights. Unbelievably up, strong is a good Keep word. Him. Come on now. Keep him up. Come on. Let's Jones go. in that round, 31 of 84, 37%. Thornton landed five of 18 punches in round three. Or round right, two, Jones. I should say. in trouble. Can't punch back. Come on, Tony. Got a fire. Got a fire, Tony. Got a fire. That's it. That's it. That's it. That'll do it. Come on, Tony. All right, brother. Too much. His shoulder hurt. Too much. The referee did him a good favor. Thornton pointed to his left shoulder. He's had problems with his left arm in the past. Apparently, he threw it out. Roy Jones utterly destroying an opponent who had never previously been knocked out in a 44-fight professional career. And that looked like about a 44-punch combination in that and last looked, 10 or 12 seconds. He was looking at every punch he threw. That's, that's fantastic. Fantastic because generally, guys, panic and start lunging forward. This guy kept looking and watching what he was doing. Another memorable performance. The 30th win in a row, the 26th knockout for the man many regard as the best there is. Well, in one sense, really, his only, op his only opponent right now 
is Pernell Whitaker in the pound for the pound battle. And he has been winning more spectacularly in his recent fights. If he steps up to the heavyweight, we better get another apartment. Couldn't fire, all right. Well, what do you think, George? Could he someday fight against heavyweights? Uh, I mean, he's talking about it. Not would, against guys like you. He, he admits that he could never go against somebody like you who would have a functional 30, 40, 50 pound weight advantage. But he's talking about maybe Tyson. Yeah, he's got the same thing Tyson has going from quickness, speed, and power. He puts on another, what, 45, 50 pounds of muscle? I wouldn't want him. <laughs> Everybody else better watch well, out. Well, actually, who do you want? But then again, that's <laughs> another discussion. <laughs> uh, this guy beat a good fighter tonight, a good solid fighter. Excellent. Yeah, a guy who wasn't going to give anything away. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Brian Gary calls a halt to the bout. The official time, two minutes. Pardon me, 45 seconds. That's 45 seconds of round number three. The winner, victory number 30. He is still the undefeated super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Well, George Foreman, in round three, in 45 seconds, Roy Jones threw 58 punches. Some guys don't throw that many punches throughout a fight. <laughs> <laughs> you fought against some of them. Yeah, <laughs> including myself. Unbelievable. And Thornton did not throw a punch by punch stat computations in round three. So in, in that less than a minute of third round action, <laughs> Jones threw 58 punches, landed 37, and Thornton didn't throw a punch. And that yields this kind of one-sided punch stat profile at the end of two rounds plus, and this is just an amazing performance. Now, what do you tell a fighter? How do you fight a Roy Jones? I'd have to go back to the drawing board if I had a fighter, train a fighter, and tell him what to do now. I know how I'd fight him, first class to Europe, uh, and avoid the ring. Larry? All right. Roy Jones is leading his own parade right now. Congratulations, Roy. Thank you. For someone who wants to fight before his hometown fans, you don't seem to want to fight very long here. This is <laughs> in two fights, you've gone about three total rounds. Give us your sum up of the fight. Well, uh, first of all, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to do things I did and to do things that I am able to do to keep, for keeping me healthy, having my hands stay healthy, and doing a terrific job. Uh, Pensacola is a wonderful place. I love everybody to come out and support me. They pump me up so much that it makes me want to go ahead and turn some stuff loose. I ain't got no patience to be waiting, you know. I just want to go ahead out there and do what I got to do, so, you know. So you're saying that the crowd turned you on and nobody seems disappointed, however, by a short fight. Well, yeah, they turned me on a lot, and if a guy makes a mistake, ding dong, rain what, on the go bill. What was the mistake then? Um, actually, I set him up with a jab, head jab, body. I kept jabbing up, jab down, jab up, jab down. I noticed in the Tony fight that when you throw one, two punches at him and get him used to him, he won't react to it, no movement after that. So I set him up and made him get locked like after the jab down. And I jabbed up and fake jab down and came with a hook instead. Super high. It seemed about, oh, 20 or 25 seconds before the end, you saw something that you stunned him or that he was hurt in some way and then you jumped on him. Is yeah. that true? Yeah, see, I'm like one of the roosters. I got the, what's up in the black hat for him? Everybody in the chicken business. I get out there, I see a guy, I get the eye on him, I see that I got him hurt, got to get him. Be careful, Ben, I get you like that, but you all right with me. You, you told us about your roosters and what you've learned about prize fighting from watching your roosters. Repeat that. Yeah, well, roosters, a good rooster is a rooster that fights like myself or like Salvador Sanchez. A good rooster stays on top of the other rooster, won't let them think, just keeps them frustrated the whole night. And that's what my goal is to go out there, keep my opponent off balance, keep him shook up, and I get him. All right. And one more thing, for Don King, it don't take 25 minutes for me and Nigel being in a fight. All it takes is guarantee me 10. Let me know I'm going to get my money up front with none of the other stuff. We can do it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Nigel's a great fighter. He's a great warrior. That's why I want to fight. All right. All right. Roy, Roy. Roy, only the great ones can promote their next fight while they're still yeah. in the, well, in the last at, one. You're looking at a great one, then. You're looking at a real good one. All right. There are fighters out there. There, there are fighters out there like Ben, like Stevie Collins, 
like Frankie Lyles, they can make the most money for fighting you, but they don't seem that interested, so what do you do? Well, what I do is keep milking my way around, taking whatever come up next. I got Brian Brandon next, I think. Uh, be careful, son. Uh, punch gonna show up. And um, I ain't sure who after that, but whatever comes up in line is what I take. And I don't mind. I'm in boxing to have fun. Nike got my back, you know. Hey, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. God is good to me. I like to see the world come together in unity. I like to see people come out and support me. My sparring partners, Jason Papillon, Keith Mullen, uh, Keith Mullen were great. Everything was terrific. Thank you, Roy. Right, thank you. Good fight. Yo, I lost my left arm. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. All right, Tony Thornton, tell us what happened there. Did you hurt your left arm? Yeah, I, well, I came into the fight with, uh, you know, a bad, a bad left anyway. But uh, it was a fight that I wanted, you know. And uh, once I, once I got caught and I got knocked down, you know, I got up, I recovered, and uh, I was over in the corner, you know, and I was weathering the storm. But I just didn't have the left. I just couldn't do anything with it. He, he, the referee said to you, "You're not punching back. You're not I punching." I wasn't able to. You, you know, were. I could, I could understand the commands of the referee, and I wanted to do something, you know. But I was doing the best I could do to protect myself, and uh, because I couldn't get, I couldn't get any punches off to, you know, to get him off me. I should have just grabbed him and held him, but I just, you know, just would have prolonged it. That's all. As a professional fighter, you're a veteran who's seen a lot of fighters come down the pike in the last 15 years. Give us your estimation. Of, of Roy Jones, the problems that any fighter faces against him, how good is he? Well, Roy, Roy's a, Roy's a very good fighter, he's quick, you know. Uh, as you can see in the first couple of rounds, I made him miss quite a few shots, you know. But it was just, you know, it was just a matter of time before, you know, I came into the fight with a bad level, just a matter of time before it's going to give out. Tell us about Jones himself as a fighter. Oh, he's a very, very good fighter. Uh, you know, as you can see, he's the best fighter that I, that I faced. No one, no one was able to stop me up until this point, you know. And uh, you know, basically, I stopped myself because I wasn't throwing any punches. Uh, he didn't. He didn't stop me. I stopped myself. I wasn't able to. He is. He is. He is the best super middleweight out there. He is the best middleweight. Uh, if that's what you want to hear, he is the best fighter out there, <laughs> pound for pound, right now. Because he was the man who was able to stop me, and no one else was able to do it. Thank you very much, Tony. Jim. All right. Thanks very much, Larry. Do you still think that your fighting roosters could go against Roy's fighting roosters? No doubt about it. That's going to have to be a showdown sooner or later. I'll bet you his roosters are pretty quick. Let's take a look now at what we're going to recommend as a drill for you when you train for your next fight. And this is Roy's last combination, about 50 punches worth in it, round number three. This is something you're just not going to see. Generally, a guy sees a guy's hurt, he starts lunging and missing, but this guy's going and he's watching everything he's doing. A dangerous thing. The referee was more than generous to stop this fight. I've never seen a guy do this before. Never. Especially in the championship fight. Ray Leonard was good, but this is something I've never seen before. You still think it's dangerous for him to fight here amid this environment and all of his friends and fans, or do you now believe that I've, he gets so much energy from it that it's good? I've, I've changed my mind. You have? Okay. I've got, I have to change my mind this time. I never thought he'd have that kind of commitment. Evidently, he's put in about 50, 50 miles per week, and uh, those legs and power punches were great. The speed was outstanding. Confidence. I've never seen anything like it. Yep. Not in a hometown. Great concentration, tremendous effort. Well, we've told you that a lot of people think Jones is the best fighter in the world, and some people think, along with Pernell Whitaker, one of the two best. And another one who would definitely rank in the top ten is a welterweight superstar named Felix Trinidad. Now, we're wow. going to get a chance to see him here on HBO on the undercard of a Pernell Whitaker engagement on November 18. Right now, he's standing by in the ring with our Larry Merchant, so let's meet Felix Trinidad. Thank you, Jim. And along with, uh, with De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad is considered the best young fighter out of there and perhaps one day a pound-for-pound pound champion. Felix, welcome. Glad to see you here. We understand you're going to be fighting on a card with Pernell Whitaker in November. Talk to us about your ambitions as a welterweight. Dice él que, que piensa usted que, que va a pelear en el 18 de noviembre contra Larry Barnes, pero después de eso, ¿qué, qué piensa usted hacer con Whitaker? Bueno, eh, creo que esa va a ser una gran cartelera en noviembre 18. Me enfrento a Larry Barnes, retador número uno, y vamos a ganar. Estoy en muy buenas condiciones y lo que estoy esperando nada más es que llegue esa pelea en noviembre 18 para tener mi título por séptima ocasión. He says right now he's waiting for the fight November 18th. After the fight November 18th, hopefully knocking out Larry Barnes, he wants to look into the future of maybe a per Pernell Whitaker fight. Well, talk to us about your fighting Pernell Whitaker. Is he the fighter you feel you have to go up against and do well against in order to gain recognition? ¿Qué piensas, Tito? Si necesitas pelear contra Whitaker para tener ese, bueno, ese estado de kilo por kilo mejor en el mundo. Necesitas pelear, pelear a Whitaker y ganarlo. Sí, bueno, si esa pelea se, se está hablando mucho de ella. Y si llega, 
vamos a, le, le voy a ganar a Pena Whitaker para quedar número uno libra por libra en el mundo. He says yes, he believes he has to fight Pernell Whitaker. After he beats him or knocks him out, he will become pound for pound one of the best fighters in the world. Do you believe at your young age that you can cope with a great fighter of Whitaker's experience? ¿Cree usted que peleando contra Whitaker usted está tan joven y él que tiene tanta experiencia? ¿Qué piensa que puede ser la pelea? Sí, es una pelea. Yo tengo yo tengo mucha experiencia with Whitaker también. Por eso que va a ser una gran pelea, por esa razón. He says we both have experience. The thing is, is that it's going to be a big fight just because we both have experience. Even though he has more than I do, it will be a big fight. Thank you very much, Felix Trinidad. We're looking forward to we seeing you. We also wanted to say thank you to Fred Levin for okay. helping us out. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Fred Levin is the manager of Roy Jones Jr. And now back to Jim. All right, Larry, that's a fight a lot of people want to see, George. Felix Trinidad's big punch against Brunel Whitaker's immaculate skills. What would happen? Well, I, I know one thing. HBO, I'm really happy about seeing this Felix Trinidad on HBO. Oh, yeah, we're excited Boy, to have him. I, he, he against anyone else, I wouldn't bet against him. This guy is an up-and-coming great fighter. Why? Because he's got combinations. He's not even, he's too dumb to be scared of someone. <laughs> He's not even afraid. And he fights like it. Well, I'm not so sure that that's a matter of being dumb. He's just got a particularly heavy punch for a 147-pound fighter. And he's a vicious young man. Vicious. That can be an asset in the ring, can't it? No doubt about it. Hey, look forward to being with, with you next week at Lewis Morrison. That's going to be a sensational oh. heavyweight battle. Boom, ba 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 boom Next Saturday night. But first, the final word from Larry Merchant on this latest statement by Roy Jones, Jr. Well, Jim, I thought I would tell one more story about Roy Jones Jr. in Pensacola to sum up the feelings about him. I took a walk into Pensacola uh, this morning and stopped by a coffee and Bienes place. Bienes, the kind of little cakes that they serve in New Orleans. Some of you may be surprised, but Pensacola is only about a three and a half hour drive from New Orleans, a 10 or 12 hour drive from Houston. It's longer than that to Miami. We are in the south, we're not in the kind of Florida that you think about. Anyway, I walked into this place and they recognized me and told me that Roy Jones comes in there regularly. And I said, well, what does he get? And he says, well, he comes and he says, um, I want some pralines. And they say, well, how many pralines do you want? And he says, how many do you have? And they tell him and he says, I want all of them. And the moral of this story is Roy Jones can have anything he wants in Pensacola and right now anywhere in the boxing world. The praline <laughs> rises to a new level in the culture, too. All right, we'll have a final word on what happened in the ring tonight between Roy Jones and Tony Thornton in just a moment. But first, let's look ahead to some upcoming great programs here on HBO. For those who are sick of hype and tired of rhetoric, here's heavyweight boxing as it's meant to be. Toe to toe, head to head, equal to equal. Lennox Lewis, Tommy Morrison, Saturday, October 7th, only on HBO. When it's power against power, the real excitement. ...newest showcase client, Roy Jones, suffocated Tony Thornton with a veritable wall of punches in round number three, forcing referee Brian Gary to stop the fight after 45 seconds of that stanza. This knockout, or knockdown, I should say, at the end of round number two, helped to punctuate the evening's proceedings as Jones headed toward his 30th consecutive victory, his 26th by knockout. Coming up immediately, goodbye from Pensacola, Florida. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing.